Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moshix mainframe channel. This is Moshix and today we're going to be having some fun with ZOS. As you may remember I've been calling out in the last couple of videos for people to, uh, to uh, who have a ZOS system who could give me access to it so that I could do some videos on ZOS and uh, three people came forward. Um, uh, one is a gentleman by the name of Preston who gave me an access to a ZOS system and I'm going to be doing some videos on that system on um, on, uh, on Kobo and Rex and about some other topics and then uh, a gentleman from India and I don't want to pronounce his name wrong so I'm not going to even try right now but he gave me access to this system here you see um, and and then one more uh, gentleman in uh, in, uh, in China gave me access to uh, a yet a different ZOS, uh, actually an OS 390 system, interestingly enough. And, um, and so this is great because uh, it allows me to work with different versions of ZOS. And uh, thank you again to all of you. Um, and today we're going to be um, playing a little bit with this ZOS system that I have here. I, I don't know exactly the version, but um, what I've done over the last few days is I have um, I have actually installed the old MVT compilers um, from uh, that we have on uh, MVS 3.8 TK4. I created some transmit packages um, XMIT. If you know what I'm talking about, I have some videos about this topic in this channel, and I have painstakingly moved over all the libraries needed. Um, uh, to uh, run the MVT compilers um, over to the ZOS system by uploading the transmit packages and then receiving the transmit packages, uh, the XMIT packages, and I just got it to work. And so I, uh, I should probably have done a video about it while I was doing it, but it took many hours and it would have been a lot of stopping the video, doing all the boring stuff, and then and then resuming the video so um, but anyway it's done already but I, what I can do in this video is show you how I got it done uh, really simple it's just uh, it was just work I needed to be done so um, I have two windows running here one on the same system this one is showing me what's going on with uh, uh, on the system this is the I'm on monitor from Greg Price that I have a whole video on, the, on on the topic of installing this so of course i installed it on this system as well and right off the bat i can see that something is wrong with this channel um here channel zero e uh is at 100 percent and i don't know why that is and in fact my terminal just went just uh hung up on me so um yeah we're gonna be making a whole new i'll have to log in again um Actually, first I'll have to ask um, the sysadmin of the system to cancel my user or wait until it times out because I won't be able to log in again. So I'll stop here actually and, and get this fixed and come back when when I got the user uh, login working again. Okay, this was fast. I, I got my user canceled and I just logged in again. Um, obviously, this connection is over the internet and uh, it's, sometimes, it's sometimes a little bit slow, but... Uh, um, and this uh, system is, I, I guess, in India, I'm not sure, but um, so um, bear with me. Um, so uh, let's get back to what, we were, what I was saying. So I have, I have installed a bunch of compilers, MVT compilers uh, from the 60s. So these are all 50 year old compilers. And just to see if they would still run on ZOS. Now, a compiler is just a user program, so there's no reason why a 24 bit compiler written or that was assembled itself 50 years ago wouldn't run on, on the ZOS architecture on a, on a real Z system. Um, I don't see a reason why it wouldn't run, but I just wanted to have fun doing it. So let's, um, let's go and, and see how this works. So I, um, I have here uh, this procedure, which I wrote myself. Uh, to get a um, to take a PL1 uh, source, which is a prime number generator, which it's actually the same prime number generator we have in the MBS 3.8 TK4. Um, I just copied that over, and um, and then I invoke the. If you know this, this is the very old 
compiler um, uh, from uh, from the 50s, the PLF PL1F compiler, and we'll see it in the in the compiler output. And then I have a, a linkage editor section, um, which uh, link it, links um, the uh, the source, and then we have a go um, a go uh, step in the JCL that of course executes what we just compiled. Um, I should obviously uh, check for the return code of the previous for the linkage editor. I mean, you could probably criticize that here and I will at some point put it in, I guess. But um, this was like a, qu a quick and dirty JCL I put together. So um, well, I think we just give it a try and see how this works. Um, um, oops. Okay, so let's execute this and we should see here some action in this screen. Um, okay, so let's run it. Um, job 1243. Oh, it abandoned. That's strange. Um, so let's go to SDSF. So this is um, this is the fun stuff for me working on a real zero system you have sdsf the the held uh, this the, the the spool viewer it's just amazing so i just had run this um, just a few minutes before i started um, taping this video and it went through fine and interesting to see why it wouldn't work now um, i have an idea um, Let's see if this will fix it. Job 1244. Yeah, just too much memory allocated to the uh, to the compile step. But um, so we can remove that. And as always, folks, um, one of the reasons I make these videos is that um, to try to break things so we can all learn from it so you don't have to repeat my mistakes. Um, so let's see here. Uh, so we just uh, ran this um, just a few seconds ago. Um, I don't know why it says time. Well, that's probably the time in India. I don't know, but um, um, I don't know what time zone this is. No idea. Um, but um, so we see here that we execute um, from the PL1 library, and uh, which is the SysC. PLI library and what I did here is I copied over the mostly PL1 compiler uh, mostly PLI compiler please see the lib which you find this yeah and in a way it's the same oh actually this is my own <laughs> this is my own website um, that's interesting, but <laughs> my website comes up first. <laughs> but um, where is mostly? Uh, well, let's look for mostly MVS 3.8 compilers. Okay, Jay Mosley's website is here. Okay, here um, there is the compiler source and you can download this here <coughs> and so then one of the compilers is going to peel one and these are the data sets that need to be um, where is it um, that you know you you get the, the installation procedure for the peel one compiler and then I put this on here on this system and he resorts mostly to a naming convention called sys C for I guess compilers and then PLY lib. So I created that. And of course, now on this system, the interesting thing is that on this system, we actually already have a PL1 compiler. And I can show you this. Um, okay. Uh, Um, so if this is actually invoking, invoking the PL1 compiler that's installed in the system, which I know is version 3.6, which by now, of course, at least a 12-year-old uh, version of PL1, but 
but vastly superior than what we have in MVS 3.8. Um, and and so I run this uh, Queens program, you know, the, the Queens problem on the chessboard with n queens having to uh, square each other off so that you know no no queen can beat the other or threatens the other. Um, and uh, I just wrote here. I have a whole video about this and. And I'll link to it in the section uh, in the description below this video uh, where I discuss the PL1F compiler. I use this exact source code here. But so I also got it to work here on um, on this system with the modern PL1 compiler. And we could maybe try to see the speeds of both compilers. Um, uh, B and message class page and then we can run this with the older F compiler and see what comes out uh, recovery of no war okay and I run it with well let's run it with 12 queens so 12 queens by 12 queens uh, a chessboard of 12 by 12 with 12 queens of course that's what it means um, so we can try to execute this and that's job one, two, four, five. Okay. Um, let's go to the output viewer. I guess it's still running. Yeah. Uh, this is the go step. And we can see what, what it's doing. Yeah, so this compiled. And you can see here, this is um, Enterprise PL1 for ZOS version 3.6 built in 2007 so this is a, an 11 year old compiler um, just over over 11 years old um, and it compiled it just fine um, no big problems here's the pseudo pseudo um, uh, assembler um, and it's executing now okay so it found 14,200 solutions. Um, oops. So, yeah, here it is. So it took it about, what, um, 25 seconds. And um, so what we're gonna do now is copy this source and run it with the PL one compiler anyway um, but we before we get there I'm confusing two things here so before we compare the, the to the modern compiler with the old compiler I wanted to show you how I got this compiler the old PL one F compiler to run on a modern ZOS system and so um, for that let me first show you I ask I don't have sysadmin privileges um, or sys program privileges on this system so I asked the this um, gentleman in India to do it for me um, what it did is you put in um, some changes in the JS2 procedure and re build the system. And I guess the system is running under VM or something. But um, uh, browse. So what you see here is he added a procedure called sys1.proclib on the on unit. Um, on this volume with and the data set sys c dot proclib uh, actually sorry so this is what he added um, he gave me an additional volume i guess it's a virtual volume on, on vm uh, zvm and then he added this procedure library to jest 2 so that jest 2 will recognize um, procedures calling it um, so these are all the libraries where procedures can be stored and then he just gave me one more library and and then i just invoke the pl1 uh, compiler and it finds it in this library and runs it and i think one more change we had to do is add it to the apf um, um, parameter but i cannot find that. i've been looking for that i don't know how he did it because um, i cannot find the apf authorization list um, maybe people better than me at this kind of stuff will find it 
but I, I can't find it. Anyway, but it did, uh, and that's really older. And then re IPL'd, and now I can run the PL 1F compiler from the 60s. But what I also wanted to show you is um, that this is indeed being uh, run by the PL 1F compiler. So you can see here OS 360 PL 1 compiler F. Um, so this is the old compiler. It doesn't say here when this compiler was compiled, but I guess. Uh, it must have been in the 60s, I, I guess, 67, 68, 1967, 1968. And you can see it also from the output um, it created is, is the old style um, assembler listing, which I prefer actually to the modern one, much more readable, beautiful output. Um, and then it links edits it with um, with the C, with the PL1 library of PL1F of, of the PL1F compiler obviously not the modern and this is the output it produced uh, just a bunch of prime numbers okay so um, so this works uh, just fine I could also run the COBOL compiler I have all the compilers we have on TK4 I have moved them over I haven't checked the COBOL and the old COBOL compiler and the Simula and the Pascal yet, but um, I will over time. I don't know how, I can, how long I can work with this ZOS system, but uh, PL1 is the, and the sum of the ones that I'm most comfortable with. Um, the one thing I want to do is also move the uh, assist assembler over to this uh, ZOS system as well. Um, so this worked. And, and now the other thing we want to do is compare the two compilers. Uh, the modern one with the with the 50 year old one and see the runtime so for the uh, n queens problem with 12 with 12 queens on a 12 by 12 chessboard we had here 25 seconds so now let's um let's get uh the same source code compiled on uh, by the old compiler to do this uh let's first check where it is okay so this is the source code Oh, it's in use. Oh, okay, so we can only, I guess, browse it. Oh. Uh, so we have to get out of here. Uh, this is not it either. Here, this is this is the one. So let's just um, copy this source. Um, copy. Uh, what is it called? Paste? I don't know the commands for ISPF. Um, well, let's just copy the whole member. Um, okay, so we do this with 3.3, .3, copy, and queens, uh, and key LF. Okay, so, um, and so we, um, so we go now and change the source so we can get it to compile with my PL1F compiler JCL procedure. Um, so let's go here, and this is the one we want, so we eliminate all the JCL from it because I just want this to be a pure source code member. Um, Put in delete, delete here. Sorry. Okay. And also, um, well, let's copy all this for a second. We can use this in the uh, JCL procedure, and and then we also delete this. Okay. So now we have pure source. Um, obviously PL1F compiler can only take uppercase so it's good this is already all uppercase and now let's go look at the JCL um, NQP 
PLF. Um, and then we need to give it the uh, sysn. Yeah, so this should work like that. Um, let's try it. Uh, queen, Q for queens. Okay, so let's see how long this takes. And we should see here some activity. Yeah, so it's here, as you can see, it's running. Yep. And it's using uh, almost 100% CPU. I think the system, if I saw correctly, has two CPUs, but I could be mistaken. Yeah, yes, two CPUs. Um, so that's good. Um, and let's go see, um, this was job 1246, so M54 SDSF, okay, alrighty, so this ran in, the other one we saw was 25 seconds, uh, let's see, this one was, uh, 2, 13, 0, 2, 20, yeah, 25 seconds for 12, for a chessboard of 12 by 12. And this was, um, so 12 and 22, that would be uh, 34 seconds. So yeah, this was significantly slower um, from 25 seconds to 34, that's uh, nine seconds more on 25, nine, that would be, uh, well, about 20-25 percent um, slower and let's see what it did here so this is obviously the old as you can see here from the compiler output this is the old um, PL1 compiler okay um, F64 level. Oh, okay, so I don't know why we're invoking a linkage editor from 1977. Um, this is interesting. SCIP version of July 1977. Ha, huh, this is really interesting. Um, let's compare it to the other one. To the new one, let's we'll see what linkage editor options came out here. So this is the compiler, and now we should get to the linkage editor. Yeah. Um, Here it is. Uh, Prelinker. So this is from version 1.9. I guess that, that's a ZOS version. Um, and okay, this is the binder. Um, procedure linkage editor. Yeah, so this is very interesting that I'm actually invoking a, a very different... So this is the PL1F uh, version, and it's using F64 level um, of July 77. This is interesting. I want to research it a little bit. Uh, ZOS SIP. Let's just copy this whole thing. I wonder what this is. Um, one, two, 
Uh-huh. That's weird. I will have to research this a little bit more and maybe put some uh, some uh, I'll, I'll put some more information about this in the description below this video but it, it is somewhat puzzling that we have a linkage editor message from uh, that's relates that relates to a very very old linkage editor which I did not expect to find on the system at all um, because if we go look at the um, at the source code, uh, wait, um, at the JCL for this. But so of course it says it's in use. Um, there's a way in ISPF to look at all the virtual screens. ISPF the virtual screens. Yeah, so I've read about this. I've actually never done it myself. But let's see what it comes back with. Split bar, swap bar. Um, there is a command. So let's see what swap bar does. nothing <laughs> maybe it's a different version of ZOS uh, but there is a way to open up a viewer for all the screens that are running um, and I don't know where it is how to show screen number okay screen name on Name on. It took it, but I don't know. Screen name one. I don't know. Um, this is my ISPF stuff. I just don't have enough. Um, I just don't have enough experience with uh, with ISPF. Um, let's, I don't know, it doesn't matter that much. Uh, let's just go back to what we're doing. Um, so, I have here somewhere, here it is. Uh, the linkage editor I invoke is IEWL, which is clearly on the system. Oh, I may be invoking a very old uh, linkage editor that's not part of ZOS. That would be interesting. So let's go here. Is there an IE WL? Yes. Oh, that solves it. Wow, this is amazing. So uh, even the linkage editor that we're using is a very old linkage editor, uh, which was compiled. Well, I don't know when this linkage editor was compiled itself, but it's clearly from 1977 because we saw that in the message. So, okay, so what's happening is that, I understand now, because we have the step library, it's actually invoking the uh, linkage editor that's in here. Oops. Um, and not the ZOS linkage editor. And that's why we see this message. Um, which version is this? Here, find F64. Yeah, that's why you find this message. This is actually the linkage editor that we just looked at in the in the uh, that I got from mostly. Um, so this is where this is from, and that's why it's from July 1977. So this is 
clearly an MVS linkage editor, but it works fine. It still does its job. It still links and edits and uh, produces a load module. Um, yeah, it did a perfect job. These are all the modules needed to assemble this. And um, CC is the PL1 library. Uh, that's on a volume called Z9 RES1. Um, just fine. Uh, I don't really know what this is, but um, and it found the same uh, 14,200 solutions, but it took 34 seconds instead of um, 25. So obviously, um, the compiler here um, did a better job. The the modern um, PL1 compiler version 3.6. Now I wonder if we turn on um, optimization for the old compiler. Um, if we can get a better performance. So uh, PL1 F compiler optimization. Uh, it will be in the bit saver. Yeah. Oh, this is the optimizer compiler. That's not the one we're going to use. Uh, let's go to bit savers. Yeah. And I think it's um, opt and then within breaks, either one or two, optimize for time or for, for compile time or for execution time. But we, we're going to see it in a second here. Um, so this reference, this compiler manual is from 1972. Why is this so slow? Let's wait for this to come back. In the meantime, um, let's go to the to the source so we can put in um, it would be here the optimization and then see if it has an impact on the execution time um, in the meantime while we wait this PL1 F compiler it saves optimization where this is it's strange that it's taking so long but it's working on it so let's wait and then let's I just don't remember right now what the syntax is to invoke the optimization feature of the F compiler but we'll get there in a second as soon as this manual downloads I guess BitSavers is having a slow day. Trailing edge. Yeah. Op optimize. Yeah. It's not finding it because it's not, it doesn't. This is the language reference. Uh, we need the compiler manual. Compiler. Um, bit savers. IBM PL1 F compiler. This is the one we just looked at. Time sharing, programmer's guide. Um, this could be it. November 68. So let's get this. And again, of course, this is going to be very slow. Um, I have, I had looked at this before. Is it? Uh, opt to. Uh, let's try this in the meantime while we wait. And let's ease up on the execution time by putting in 8. Um, this should, should be very fast. 1247 already ended. Um, that's good. 
Let's see what the compiler says about up to zero two. It took it. So let's look at the let's run again with the execution with twelve so we can compare execution times directly. Um, I hope nothing else is running on the system which would slow down this, this program execution, but um, let's cancel this one. So this is the one which took 34 seconds. At 2.42 we started that one. Uh, oh, we can actually see it here. Yeah, so this is still running. It's a computational intensive uh, job. The end queens problem is very computational intensive. Uh, Especially if you use the algorithm which I use, which is backtracking, it does a lot of moving of pieces on the chessboard. Okay, it looks like this finished. Um, yeah, and let's go check it out. All right, so this now took 27 and 4, 31 seconds. So this did optimize actually. Uh, it went from 34 seconds to 31, um, which is good. Let's see what happens if we put in uh, optimize one, just for sake of comparison. I think it optimizes for compile time, not for execution time. Um, you can see it running here. This is um, running now. And uh, I'm not gonna disturb the system too much, so we it's not going to be, uh, the system is not going to take away execution time from the job uh, to answer my um, my interactive work here on TSO. Um, this should, at any moment, this should finish. If it was 31, so, okay, this is done now. And it should be 1249, if no other job was running in the system. Yeah, 1249. Um, and Let's look what happened here now. It's two seconds and 31, so it went to 33 seconds. So yeah, optimize, optimize two is uh, optimization for execution time. Um, and this runs fine, obviously, uh, as we saw, the model compiler is quite a bit faster, even though we hadn't turned on optimization. Um, so let's go to the other one where we had optimization and um, what is it prog and let's run this with optimization turned on um, and for this we need to look at IBM PL1 compiler optimization uh, how to turn that on compiler option okay optimize is the I just saw that optimize what was it Optimize zero. So first of all, we know we gotta go in here. Parm. Optimize two, I guess. I mean, there must be a little bit of compatibility. Uh, Optimize two, optimize three. Here, let's see what this means. Okay. Optimize performance of compiler, either optimize two, optimize together with, if you was optimized with this. Okay, so let's do uh, optimize two, and then let's compare it with optimize three. And we're doing this obviously with 12 queens. Um, interesting uh, comparison. Job 1250, and we should see it running here. Mosh XP. Yep, it's running. Because we were actually, if you want to now compile, uh, compare the optimizers. So un unoptimized, it was 34 seconds uh, for the old compiler versus 25 seconds for the new compiler, right? Um, if you remember, this was 25 seconds here. Uh, okay, this ended. 
and this one was 34 seconds. Then we optimized with the old compiler, we brought it all the way down to 31 seconds versus 24. Uh, but obviously that's not fair because we have optimization turned on for the old compiler, but we didn't have it for the new compiler. Now we finished this job here, 1250 with optimization. Let's see how long that took. Um, okay, so, so that's 13 seconds and 13 seconds, so it's 26 seconds. So it didn't actually change that much, I'm surprised. Um, let's run it with three. Okay. And now let's run it with three. Um, oops. So that's running. Two five one, and let's go over there and wait for it. It should take about 25 26 seconds. Yeah, finished. Uh, it has an error co code here, but I know um, it's probably uh, too many warnings, in the, but it's fine, it ran. So let's check it again, and it went. 32, 25 seconds. So um, yeah, so the optimization turned on is 25 seconds. Um, um, and I guess what it's doing, it's optimizing anyway, whatever it can and, and in the standard version without optimize turned on. And when you all turn on optimize at two and three, it, there's just not much more than you can find to optimize because the loops have already been optimized. Um, but um, what this tells us is that uh, the modern compiler, the fastest it can run it with optimization or without is 25 seconds. And the old compiler without optimization is 34. Um, with all the optimization turned on, it's at uh, 31 seconds. So that's a, a direct comparison of this uh, real compilers. We could do it for COBOL and we could do it for all. And I think that's, uh, that's about it. Uh, there's no other um, modern compilers installed on the system as far as I know but um, but this was interesting um, so you can absolutely get very old compilers to run these are 50 year old compilers by the way as we just saw from 1968 that's exactly 50 years old um, and um, and it runs just fine uh, uh, I also showed how to get it to run we just need to include it in the you need to include the procedure and the libraries uh, in the JCL and in the JS2 starter procedure. Um, so this is all really quite simple. I'm having a lot of fun with the system. Um, and I also got my monitor to run with, in just in a couple of minutes. This was very, very easy. Um, and, um, and I think I'll stop here. Uh, I'll be making more videos um, uh, with the other uh, ZOS systems I have running. I'm doing some stuff on Rex and, um, and uh, I'll come back with, to you soon with more videos. If you like this video, please uh, press on the thumbs up button. And I would urge you to consider subscribing to the Moshex Mainframe channel to get notifications of future videos. And I hope to see you soon on this channel. Thank you and goodbye.